There's a video circulating online that shows something most people assume is either fake or from some distant future. A person in what appears to be a jet-powered suit flying across a lake at over 80 kilometers per hour, performing maneuvers that look like they were pulled directly from a superhero movie. Except this isn't CGI or careful camera tricks, it's real footage of operational technology that you can actually purchase and fly right now if you have the training and budget. While most discussions about future transportation focus on autonomous vehicles or hyperloop concepts that remain years or decades from practical deployment, a quieter revolution has been unfolding in personal aviation. Multiple companies have developed and are now selling functional personal flight devices that don't require runways, don't need pilot's licenses in many jurisdictions, and can be operated by individuals after relatively brief training periods. These aren't experimental prototypes gathering dust in research labs. Their commercial products with order backlogs, safety certifications, and growing communities of users who have already logged thousands of flight hours. From jet powered suits that strap directly to your body to electric vertical takeoff aircraft that fit in a standard garage, the technology enabling individual human flight has crossed the threshold from science fiction to practical reality. What follows is an examination of eight distinct approaches to personal aviation that are currently operational or entering final commercialization phases. These represent fundamentally different solutions to the same problem, how to give individuals the ability to fly without requiring the infrastructure, training, or costs traditionally associated with aviation. Some prioritize speed and range, others focus on accessibility and ease of use, but all share one characteristic, they're available now, not in some hypothetical future. The jet-powered suit that makes humans fly the most visceral and immediately recognizable approach to personal flight is the jet-powered suit developed by Gravity Industries in the United Kingdom. The concept is straightforward but technically challenging. Strap small jet engines directly to a human body and use the thrust to achieve controlled flight. The execution required solving numerous engineering problems around weight distribution, fuel management, control systems, and safety. The gravity suit uses five miniature jet engines, two mounted on each arm and one on the back, generating combined thrust equivalent to over 1,000 horsepower. The pilot controls direction and speed through arm positioning, creating an intuitive control scheme where moving your arms changes your flight vector much like a bird adjusting wing position. The system can reach speeds exceeding 85 kilometers per hour and altitudes above 3,600 meters, though operational flights typically stay much lower for safety reasons. The learning curve is substantial. Unlike systems with computer-assisted stabilization, the jet suit requires the pilot to manually balance thrust and maintain orientation. Training programs run by Gravity Industries typically require several days of instruction before pilots can safely operate the system independently. The physical demands are also significant. Pilots must have enough arm strength to hold their limbs extended against substantial thrust forces for the duration of flight. The practical applications extend beyond recreational thrill-seeking. Emergency services in the UK have tested the suits for rapid response paramedic deployment in mountainous terrain, where helicopter access is difficult. Industrial companies have explored using them for inspections of tall structures like wind turbines or bridges, and military organizations have conducted evaluations for potential special operations applications. The barrier to widespread adoption isn't primarily technical, it's economic. At approximately $440,000 per suit, the gravity system costs more than most people spend on housing. But for organizations where the capability to rapidly deploy a person to difficult-to-reach locations has substantial value, the economics become more favorable than they initially appear. The turbine-powered skateboard that conquered the English Channel a different approach to personal jet propulsion comes from French inventor Frankie Zapata, whose flyboard air takes the concept in a more minimalist direction. Rather than wearing engines on your body, you stand on a platform containing multiple turbo jets that provide thrust from below. The result looks like a flying skateboard, an apt description given that balance and small body movements control the device much like skateboarding or surfing. 
The flyboard air generates up to 140 kilograms of thrust, enabling flights up to 150 meters altitude and speeds exceeding 200 kilometers per hour. The flight duration is limited to approximately 10 minutes by fuel capacity, which creates interesting constraints on practical applications. 10 minutes at 200 kilometers per hour provides a potential range of over 30 kilometers, enough for crossing bodies of water, traveling between nearby islands, or bypassing ground level obstacles in urban environments. Zapata demonstrated the device's capabilities dramatically in 2019 by successfully crossing the English Channel, a 35-kilometer journey across one of the world's busiest shipping lanes. The flight required a mid-crossing refueling stop on a boat, but it proved that the technology could handle real transportation tasks rather than just control demonstrations in ideal conditions. The stabilization system represents one of the flyboard's key innovations. Gyroscopic sensors continuously monitor orientation and automatically adjust thrust to maintain balance, significantly reducing the skill required compared to fully manual control. Pilots still need training and practice, but the learning curve is shorter than systems requiring complete manual balance control. The practical applications currently focus on coastal and island regions where water creates barriers to ground transportation, ferry services between islands that are too close to justify aircraft but too far for convenient boat travel represent one potential market, emergency response in marine environments, reaching boats in distress or swimmers in trouble faster than traditional rescue craft represents another application where the speed advantage justifies the cost and operational complexity. The backpack helicopter concept made real. The idea of a personal helicopter small enough to wear like a backpack has appeared in science fiction for decades, but actually building one that works requires solving numerous technical challenges around weight, power, control, and safety. The Copter Pack, developed in Australia, represents one of the more successful attempts to make this concept practical. The device uses coaxial rotors, two rotors spinning in opposite directions on the same axis, mounted on a frame that straps to the pilot's back. This configuration provides several advantages over single rotor designs. The counter-rotating rotors eliminate the torque that would otherwise spin the pilot uncontrollably, and they provide more compact lift generation than separated rotors would achieve. At 42 kilograms, the copter pack is heavy for something you wear, but remarkably light for something that can lift a human into sustained flight. The payload capacity of 120 kilograms includes the pilot's weight, limiting the system to smaller individuals unless cargo capacity is sacrificed. The flight endurance of approximately 30 minutes with current battery technology provides enough time for practical missions in search and rescue, inspection, or emergency response scenarios. The regulatory classification as an ultralight vehicle in many jurisdictions means operators don't need traditional pilot licenses significantly lowering the barrier to entry. The control system is designed for intuitive operation, weight shifting and simple control inputs manage direction and altitude without requiring the complex coordination traditional helicopters demand. The compact storage requirement, it fits in a standard residential garage, makes the copter pack one of the first personal aviation devices that doesn't require hangar space or specialized facilities. This accessibility factor could prove more important important than raw performance specifications in determining whether personal flight devices achieve widespread adoption beyond enthusiast communities. The electric multirotor that doesn't require a license. The explosion of drone technology over the past decade created a foundation of motors, controllers, batteries, and flight management systems that can be scaled up to human-carrying vehicles. The Jetson 1 from Sweden represents this scaling-up approach, creating what amounts to a manned multi-rotor drone. The vehicle uses eight electric motors arranged to provide redundancy. If one or even two motors fail, the remaining units can maintain controlled flight. This safety through redundancy approach is fundamental to making electric vertical takeoff vehicles practical for human transport. The all-electric propulsion eliminates the noise, vibration, and maintenance requirements of combustion engines while providing precise thrust control. The flight endurance of 20 minutes and maximum speed of 100 
102 km per hour create a useful operating envelope for local travel, commuting across a city, bypassing traffic congestion, or reaching locations without road access. The range limitation makes this unsuitable for long-distance travel, but many transportation needs are fundamentally local. The plug-and-fly design philosophy prioritizes ease of use over maximum performance. Artificial intelligence handles stabilization, obstacle avoidance, and many flight management functions that would otherwise require pilot skill and attention. The operator provides high-level directional inputs while the system handles low-level control adjustments. This automation dramatically reduces the training required. The company claims most users can operate the vehicle safely after minimal instruction. At $92,000, the Jetson 1 costs roughly what a luxury car would, making it accessible to upper-middle-class consumers rather than only the wealthy. The company reports over 5,000 advance orders, suggesting substantial market demand exists at this price point. Whether that demand translates into sustained sales once the novelty factor fades remains to be seen, but the order backlog indicates this isn't just a curiosity for a tiny niche market. The air racing future that's already organizing competitions. One unexpected development in personal aviation is the emergence of competitive air racing using purpose-built electric vertical takeoff vehicles. The Airspeeder Mark III, developed by Alauda Aeronautics in Australia, represents this new category of racing aircraft designed specifically for competitive three-dimensional racing rather than practical transportation. The vehicle can reach speeds of 300 km per hour, genuinely fast even compared to ground-based racing vehicles, while maintaining the agility to navigate complex three-dimensional courses. The distributed propulsion with eight rotors provides redundancy for safety while enabling maneuvers that fixed-wing aircraft couldn't accomplish. Artificial intelligence systems automatically prevent collisions between racing vehicles and enforce virtual course boundaries, making close racing safer than it would be with purely manual control. The business model isn't selling vehicles to consumers, it's creating a new spectator sport. The company is organizing racing series with professional pilots, broadcast coverage, and sponsorship deals similar to Formula One or other motorsports. Some experienced racing drivers from ground-based series have already begun training for air racing, lending credibility and publicity to the emerging sport. So here's where personal aviation technology stands right now. Multiple distinct approaches to individual human flight have moved from experimental prototypes to commercial products with customers, order backlogs, and thousands of operational flight hours. Jet-powered suits enable Ironman-style flight for those with $440,000 and willingness to undergo extensive training. Turbine-powered platforms can cross bodies of water at 200 km per hour. Electric multi-rotors that don't require pilot licenses can be purchased for roughly the cost of a luxury car. And purpose-built racing aircraft are laying the foundation for competitive air sports. These aren't concepts or vaporware. They're operational systems that real people are actually using. The barriers to widespread adoption remain substantial. High costs, limited flight duration, regulatory uncertainty, safety concerns, and the simple fact that most people don't have compelling reasons to fly short distances when ground transportation works adequately. But the technology itself has crossed the threshold from someday possible to available now if you want it badly enough. Whether personal flight devices remain niche products for enthusiasts and specialized applications, or eventually become common enough that seeing some someone commute by air stops being remarkable, depends less on technology than on economics, regulations, and whether compelling use cases emerge that justify the cost and complexity. The capability exists. What's still being determined is whether enough people want it badly enough to overcome the practical barriers that remain.